them. With pleasure now, I'm introducing another special guest on my show. Um, this is um, Anne, Anne-Marie Allen joining me for a chat. Um, how are we doing today, Anne-Marie Allen? Yes, I'm very good indeed. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, great to have you on. I'm here to uh, invite you on just to talk about a few singles, that um, a set of singles you have um, released or going to release. Um, and mm-hmm. um, just wanted to ask first, um, how long have you been doing music for? Yeah, so I've been doing music probably since I was about 15, so like over half of my life now, uh, but in a professional capacity, probably since probably about something like 2017, 2018, because I went to university, I did quite a creative subject at university, and then I got into writing, basically, like writing songs. Um, from that stage onwards and that was when I started sort of yeah sort of gigging in more of a professional capacity as an original artist sort of thing that's yeah. great um, and I know you sing as well but do you also do other um, forms of art like in the in, in the art world as well you know like um, the writing side and the creativity side yeah so I used to so I my first degree was in drama and theatre arts and it was interesting because I actually did a module in playwriting and that got me into the idea of writing songs mm-hmm. um, because I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm quite used to writing plays. So let me see if I can write some songs now as well. And at that point, I was learning a little bit of guitar as well. So it's just kind of putting the two together and it kind of grew organically. But I, 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 I didn't get myself to a good enough standard on guitar. So I was like, okay, what I want to do then is just focus on writing songs and how I present those songs as well to the audience so using those drama skills um when I'm sort of like performing with the band as well you know that's good um so like your um you know your your creative side with um it's like acting or drama um that's been transferable Mm -hmm. to your the music side performing arts yeah absolutely so I'm I'm, I love the arts anyway and I love all forms of arts really um but um yeah I've gone more and more down the sort of music route now rather than the sort of theatre room I think that was like my younger self but I do enjoy I do enjoy going to the theatre and I do enjoy seeing musicians present um their songs in a way that can be quite theatrical um and I I know Mark was saying he wanted me to mention um some of the other South Birmingham musicians and a good friend of mine Jack Goodall Mm. um one of the reasons I really like his music um is because I really like the way that he delivers it um live so I really like to go and play live and see I like the songs and I like the way that um he writes in his style but um I particularly like um, the way they're presented um and that's how I came across Mark actually who's been doing the remixes on this EP with me um, because he was a good friend of Jack's as well and he comes down to both mine and Jack's gigs um, so it kind of makes up, you know, a portion of the South Birmingham original live music scene. What do you think of the scene at the moment um, around Birmingham and the West Midlands? Could it be better or um, do you think it's uh, growing at the moment? It's just um, coming yeah. back from, from from the COVID, isn't it? You know, just trying to find its feet again. Totally. I think it was really hard during the lockdown um, for people to really be able to, yeah, like uh, feel heard because when you've got a camera in front of you, it's just, you kind of lose that authenticity in terms of the audience connection. So I think lockdown did make it a lot harder, but Birmingham specifically, um, I think it's quite a diverse music scene um, and probably because it's quite a diverse city. Um, but um, I think for Birmingham musicians, there's a lot of there's a lot of venues. There's a lot of venues and there's a lot of opportunities if you kind of put yourself out there. And we generally, in my experience anyway, sort of South Birmingham, um, I can't say much about North Birmingham because I, I don't, I've only done a couple of gigs over that way, really. Um, but they, people seem to be very supportive of each other. And there's a lot of kind of like, oh, OK, I'm putting a gig on here. Would you like to support me? And then vice versa. And I think like for me, branching out and doing festivals and meeting people and artists along the way there, that's been a really good opportunity to get gigs elsewhere as well because you meet other artists and you sort of go, hey, yeah, I like you. I feel like that would fit really cool on on the lineup with with what I'm doing. And you can support each other in different areas of the country, which means that you then kind of get a bit more exposure um, as well. So, yeah, that's been quite a cool I guess I guess it's like networking as well, um, you know, jamming mm. with other musicians, which is, a, which is a good thing. I think in this industry... That, that needs to happen more doesn't it totally, it totally yeah because there's so many unsigned independent artists that you know in my opinion deserve to be signed 
Um, and there is something really humbling about having quite a fruitful and, um, you know, diverse music scene because I know I'm really into music anyway. So even if I wasn't an artist, I'd still be going to a lot of gigs. And and I, I know I've, over the years I've seen so many amazing artists that it does humble you because you sort of go, oh, right, OK. It's, it's like um, there's there's a lot out there, you know, that should be should be appreciated. So, yeah, and I kind of I, that's one of the things I actually like about doing original music you know it's, it's not it's not like competitive well for me it's not competitive it's more like wow yeah everyone's wicked <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah. um yeah, and yeah. Uh, what, would you, what would you like to say to people um how important it is to support um live venues entertainment uh, venues it's more than ever yeah. essential isn't it yeah particularly more important now with the lockdown and the, and the kind of yeah, what people who own those venues and the artists as well that, that make a, a living out of art. Like, so the people who are doing it as their day job, they're the ones that we want to really look after because I know when I first started gigging, because I've always had a full-time job as well, just because I, I, I know that there's a lot of amazing artists out there. So I haven't quite got the confidence in myself to be able to say, yeah, I can make this yeah. with like just making a living out of it. So, um, like with that in mind, I think like the people who, um, yeah, the people who are doing it as their day job, they're the ones we have to look after the most. Because I remember a time when I was like um, first starting out and I was sort of doing a few free gigs and like, yeah, if it's a charity gig or something, that's 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 totally acceptable. But people who make a living out of it have said to me, no, 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 you don't. You, art is work. You know, do not uh, think for one minute that you can't charge anything because that undermines us and what we're doing because we're doing it as our full-time jobs and when you look at it like that it does it does make you understand you know the importance of, of supporting it you know yeah some valid points there actually um well done yeah. for um talking about that now on to music now um so what i'm going to do is i um, just talk about a couple of the tracks uh, you've sent me i'm going to start with money actually um one of the mm. your tracks you sent me, uh, Mark Mark Fingermix has given it a, a remix, and I've listened to it, and it instantly it instantly registers on your brainwave that this is a good catchy little number. You just tell me more about money. <laughs> yeah, so money like came about because so basically in my day job I'm like a, I do it's pretty much social care, so it's like I, I manage a homeless hostel for young people. So a lot of my values um, and the stuff that I'm doing in my day job come out in my music quite naturally. So um, many of my songs, they're written about the human condition, then they can have a, a, a political, uh, a very political angle. Um, and for me, it was just about observation. So, and it all stemmed from a time when I was at a party and it was just loads of rich people basically, with just like more money than sense, spending too much time on Instagram, not really awake and not really socially conscious enough to realise that actually, like that's actually quite a sad way to live. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's even though it's a catchy, fun song, like um, the the lyrics have got more depth and meaning. Um, it, there's a lot more to it than that. So so yeah, so it's talking about people who spend too much time on Instagram. It's talking about people who, you know, love. Uh, love money basically uh, and I found my freedom in in yeah having enough money to get by but as an artist it's not always been something that I've valued you know as a as the highest thing I've got a child now so I, I know that I need money to support my child um, but um, I think like on the whole it's like money this whole money thing this it's a trap right because it's connected to capitalism and it's connected to this kind of one track mind that doesn't you know, you don't really feel alive, you know. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's where that came from. So observations at that party um, and me coming home and going back to the hotel room with my with my partner being like, it's like people are like just taking the mickey, really. Just mm. uh, this catchy thing came to my mind where I was like, ah, oh, we got money. <laughs> and that's that was the evolution of it. So and it started off being like a punk track. So like and originally the, the what I had in mind was more punk. And obviously with what... Um, Mark's done and remixed it it sounds more like 80s with what he's done but it's it's really I think it's really cool that people you know people take enough interest in my music to want to remix them and it can sound equally as good even though that wasn't like the angle that I was going down and that means Mark has his stamp on it as well so 
it's been really brilliant to work with him and have him sort of yeah let the tracks go off on a, a kind of tangent of their own in his in his creative mind you know that, that's good yeah. um i know um i know he's done another track for you my my baby beyond the shore as well that's got the the kind of new disco that seems to be in at the moment yeah yeah and it's funny because i i wrote a song called i like which is very disco when i deliver it with a full band um and yeah i but i didn't i didn't realize disco was really in at the moment until i started doing a bit of djing and stuff and i was like oh people are really into disco um but that just by it accidentally came about as a disco song but with beyond the shore when i first wrote it it was like a blues song yeah and then Mark's remixed it, uh, and it's more sort of disco, which, which, which again is just an interesting take on things. But myself as, a, as an artist, I've never really wanted to be confined by genres. Mm. So for me, it's 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 really fun when people decide to like just take things take things that I've written and just do some funky stuff with them. Sure, sure. <laughs> You're not the first person to. Um you know, say, uh, you know, when people put you in boxes or categorise what genres you do, yeah. you know, you, you you are an artist, simple as that. And That's you do it, all, yeah. all, all genres, you know. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, I know the interviews go so quickly, but I've got time just to play uh, one of your tracks. Uh, just wanted to ask you first, uh, where can people follow you on Facebook or social media? Yeah. Yeah. So if you just look for my name, it's Anne-Marie Allen. It's double barreled. So it's A-N-N-E hyphen M-A-R-I-E. And then Allen is A-double-L-E-N. You'll find my website, which has got links to Instagram, Facebook, uh, Spotify, the rest of it um yeah that's 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 where you'll find me if you're interested great yeah well um i just wanted to ask what uh, track would you like me to play um i know where uh, money is a good one and also my baby beyond the shore as well um take yeah your pick. i think yeah probably go go with money because i've just released a music video for that in, in the, the version that i did so i think it would be quite apt to yeah to play that one great yeah. well Anne marie alan thanks for taking time out to join me today uh, danny on uh, my syndicated show and we'll get this track on mm -hmm. on the airwaves now for you great uh nice, one. You. Thank you, danny. nice one yeah